The eukaryotes impact how they transcribe genes, regulate genetic transcription, a little bit differently than prokaryotes. So in prokaryotes, we saw that the default situation was most genes tend to be repressed by specific repressor proteins, like LAC repressor. And when those repressors are moved from the DNA by a small molecule effector usually, then transcription can occur. The opposite tends to, not always, but tends to be true in eukaryotes, that it's activation that has to happen in order for transcription to occur. So in eukaryotes, generally transcription is off until it's activated. And the way that transcription activation works in eukaryotes, here's a gene. Let's say we're going to talk about the galactose utilization system in yeast, for example, a model eukaryote. We have a gene like GAL1, which is one of many genes that have to be turned on for organisms to be able to utilize the carbon source galactose, a particular sugar. And we've already talked a little bit about how there are proteins like Tata binding protein that recognize the TATA sequence upstream in the promoter region of a gene. And how those proteins like Tata binding protein, TBP, bind the specific DNA sequence and then will help recruit RNA polymerase to start transcription. But there is another element, another class of elements called, these are tr general transcription factors, that is proteins like TBP tend to act every gene, every time transcription occurs, hence their general transcription factors. But for turning on specific genes at specific times, like when galactose is present, there are also molecules that are just called transcription factors. These are proteins that recognize specific DNA sequences that are called enhancers. And the idea here is that the binding of the transcription factor to the enhancer will stimulate or enhance transcription of this protein, a transcription of the gene, and then there will be translation into protein. So the enhancers are interesting. The promoter is almost always just five prime or just upstream of the transcription start site. So the promoter is usually very close to the transcription start site. Enhancers, on the other hand, can be located pretty much anywhere, upstream of the gene, downstream of the gene in an intron. So it's really actually quite difficult to locate exactly where enhancers exist in the DNA. Now, the enhancer that turns on GAL1, the protein that binds the enhancer for GAL1 is called GAL4. And GAL4, I'm gonna blow up this section of the enhancer a little bit. GAL4 has two domains, like some other proteins that we've looked at. The GAL4 works in this sense, it's a dimer. It's got a DNA binding domain, DNA BD. Those are down here. And those are the sites that specifically recognize the sequence of the GAL1 enhancer. And then it's also got an activation domain. That's the part of the protein that actually interacts with other proteins and allows for transcription of GAL1. Now, when galactose is not present, the normal state of the situation is that there's another protein that binds to GAL4. So here's GAL4. And that protein, GAL80, prevents GAL4 from activating transcription. So what's going to happen is, and this is what's the case without galactose, which I'll abbreviate GAL, GAL. So GAL4 is bound to the enhancer, but it's not turning on transcription of GAL1 yet because it's blocked from doing so by GAL80. Another way to think about this is to draw the genetic pathway. We have GAL80 which represses GAL4, prevents it from doing its normal function in the cell, which is active activation of GAL1. So GAL4 
will normally, in certain circumstances, which we're about to talk about, turn on the expression of gal1. So what is that situation? Well, it's in the presence of galactose. So when galactose is present, galactose binds to a third protein, gal3. So here's gal3. Galactose, I'm going to model as just a little circle. Here's gal3. So what happens is galactose binds to gal3, and when that happens, galactose 3, the protein, goes and grabs gal80 and pulls it off of gal4. So then you get something that's like a gal3, gal80 complex. And now the activation domain has been uncovered. It's been released from its repression. And now the gal4 activation domain can do its job in regulating, turning on transcription of gal1. Now the reason that it can do that and the reason that these enhancers can be located thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of base pairs upstream of the gene that they actually work on is that eukaryotes, of course, have long linear chromosomes. So the GAL1 gene might be here. And the enhancer, which I'll just briefly abbreviate as E here, might be tens or hundreds of thousands of base pairs upstream with GAL4, now released from its repressive interaction of GAL80. We've got GAL4 ready to enhance transcription. The reason that this can happen is because those long linear eukaryotic chromosomes are flexible. The chromosomes are not linear, especially during interphase. And at least they're not stretched out in a straight line. They are, of course, a single line of double-stranded DNA. The point is that that flexibility means that you can actually get those GAL4 proteins very close by just having the chromosome bend, loop around to GAL1. And what happens then is that those proteins can help by interactions with other proteins like general transcription factors help recruit and stabilize RNA polymerase at the transcription start site and then transcription proceeds. In the absence of galactose, then galactose and LAC3 dissociate. LAC, you're sorry, GAL3 can no longer bind to GAL80. GAL80 returns to repressing GAL4's activation domain just by binding to it and preventing that activation domain of GAL4 from doing these protein-protein interactions that turn on transcription of GAL1. So what I'd like you to do for next class when we meet is to finish, to add these interactions of GAL3 to this pathway of GAL80, GAL4, and GAL1, and make sure you use the appropriate symbol, an arrowhead or a blunt arrowhead, to represent how galactose and how GAL3 interact with this pathway to regulate the expression of GAL1.